so we took these notes um, in class today and we wrote down Roy G. Biv, that is the color of all the colors in the, uh, the rainbow or in the visible light spectrum. And it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And then above the red, you were supposed to write a long, uh, draw a long wave in the point from any two equal points on this wave, which would be, a, for instance, crest to crest, that's a wavelength. Over violet, you should have drawn a short wave where the crests are very close together. So it's a short wavelength and a long wavelength. And these wavelengths represent energy. For instance, if I was going to throw a rock at you, would you want me to throw it slow, like or would you want me to throw it fast, like <clears throat> The kids in class all picked slow because it wouldn't hurt as bad. So the red light, the long wavelength, is less energy. The violet light, the high wavelength, is high energy, can do more damage. So actually, when you see violet light, that is light with more energy than red light. Okay, so here we looked at the, the atom itself, with its nucleus, with its large proton and large neutron, and then a the little bitty electron out here in, in the electron cloud at a certain distance or at a certain energy level from the nucleus. And remember, the electrons don't orbit the nucleus like this. They are in orbits, the first two do, but the rest of them are in little orbits around the nucleus. So this is an orbit, this is an orbit, this is an orbit. These orbits have shapes. But it's the electrons orbiting each other or orbiting a point. So when the atom is just in its normal state, it's called ground state. And you know like how it is to be grounded. You're not going anywhere. That's ground state. But this, if the atom uh, is energized in any way, for instance, if it uh, has uh, electricity or it gets light energy or chemical energy, that electron absorbs or all the electrons absorb that energy and it makes them move faster. And if they absorb enough energy, they can actually go to a new energy level or they get to go a farther away from the nucleus than where they are in ground state. So this atom will absorb energy, the electron gets excited and it moves away from the nucleus. Now it's excited but it has to return to the nucleus and that's called going back to ground state. So the electron is either in ground state or excited. When it returns to the nucleus it releases the exact same amount of energy as it absorbed but the form of the energy it releases is a photon, which is a particle of light. Now light can be measured because light has wavelengths. And with a spectrometer, we can measure the wavelength and determine exactly how much energy that photon has. And of course, an, an electron that's close to the nucleus is very tightly held. It, do, it can't get away very easy, so it has to absorb a lot of energy. So it would emit light in, with a, a shorter wavelength, so it had to absorb more energy to get away. An electron that's farther away from the nucleus is loosely held, so it can absorb uh, light down in this end of the spectrum. So this light that this, or this photon that this electron emits tells us what the, uh, how much energy the electron absorbed when it became excited, so we know how far that electron is from the nucleus. So now I'm going to demonstrate.